All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, couple things I want to address before we begin. Um, firstly, the thing that I got to get at the top of my head is my Let's Play of Kirby's Return to Dreamland. First of all, I'm not canceling it because I'm already way too deep into the game, but I'm bringing it up because my laptop is having a lot of issues. I've tried to upload part 19 twice now, and for whatever reason, YouTube can't seem to upload it, and it'll just drop the connection. Like, it'll process all the information, and then YouTube, when it's at like 99%, it'll be like, well, it can't process as the video. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why it keeps happening. I could go for a third time, but I'm expecting the same results, so... So, honestly, don't, probably don't expect any Let's Play videos for a while because I, there's probably something wrong with my laptop, which I've had for, like, I'm trying to think, like, probably since I got into college, so probably about, like, six years now, and lately it's been having a lot of problems where every time the air comes out, it, the computer will, the whole thing will just freeze up and it will get incredibly annoying. And I have a feeling it's going to happen during this review. And yeah, and, I'm bring, and that leads me to number two. Tonight we're going to do something that I haven't done in a long time, probably since my review of Party Pooped, and that's actually review the episode on my laptop. Because my mom and I are now watching older seasons of The Amazing Race on DVD because they are no longer available on Hulu, and I do not want my sister to pay for them on Amazon, so I had the liberty to buy the DVDs of seasons 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and I obviously skipped 8 for a reason if you're a fan of The Amazing Race. Alright, so... I had to get all of that out of the way first, because if you're not seeing any recordings of my Let's Play of Kirby's Return to Dreamland and being uploaded, that's part of the reason why. And with that, on that note, it is time to jump into the next episode of Friendship is Magic Season 7, Hard to Say Anything. So this episode starts out the now that Sweet Apple Anchors with the CMNC basically digging up some old contests. Yeah. Old from the show. And I'm assuming that these are essentially the wait. Oh, never mind. So basically getting back to my point, the costumes that they brought up, I have a feeling that those are probably the costumes from Showstoppers. So that's definitely a. So that's definitely something to say. Did I forget to mention that YouTube sucks? Cause they bombard me with ads left and right. <sighs> Cause I clicked on another video by accident. But anyways, basically you didn't diss much. They basically put on their outfits and they and the same and CC Big Mac putting apples in the barrel and going to the same place. By the way, it's season seven, and I don't think we actually got a name for the village. Just a little food for thought. But they noticed Big Mac's behavior of being all mushy as the CMNC basically decide to follow him in the not-so-obvious oh, disguises that are not really all that well hidden. And and so, after the theme song, they basically hide, go into Big Mac Hay Barrel in said disguises, and Sweetie Belle is reading a fairy tale book. Big Mac just didn't. But what we do notice is that when the semen see open their eyes, we see Big Mac get hearts flying all over himself and him smiling. And we see him talking to Sugar Bell. 
one of the four characters that was probably one of the main focuses from the cutie map. So, yeah. So they see them talking and they follow them more as we see more of Big Mac behavior. Behavior. As the semen see basically look inside to see them see more Big Mac and Sugar Belt interacting. Uh... What the hell did you just say? Yeah, I probably should address a bit of the elephant in the room. Is that this episode tends to have a lot of sexual innuendos. And, yeah... If you're like many who decide to play a drinking game that'll have you dead in a millisecond, take a shot every time a sexual innuendo is in a line of dialogue in a cartoon about talking horses. Okay, so, yeah, you could pr pretty much by this point, you could probably put two and two together that Big Mac has a crush on Sugar Bell. Oh. And she basically he shows her interest and treats the Big Mac and pretty much explains her problem that her... And there it is. The issue that I addressed earlier, but like I said, it's not like it's a massive thing. It only lasts like a few seconds, but it's still annoying. Well, anyways, Sugar Bell basically tries to explain to Big Mac about her, uh, her trying to expand her display stand since it's really tiny. I'm not even going to say anything else. Yeah, so pretty much like I said, shook. So the CMNC basically he show, tell Big Mac what's going on, and they. good reasons. And two, this is going to be, this is pretty much the pony equivalent of Justin Bieber. Ugh. And I feel like the DHS is probably late to the party as pretty much he tries to make this pony pony to be the equivalent of just pretty much, ugh. Because that's pretty much the describing of Justin Bieber before his testicles finally dropped and has become an everyday artist. 
So in any case, this is essentially going to be the screen hog to try to get Sugar Bell's attention. This is Justin Bieber Pony, whose name you can't remember. And if you're actually balls enough to tell me in the comments what his name actually is, if I decide to turn him on, fuck you! The rest of the world is going to call him Justin Bieber Pony, whose name you can't remember. I thought I'd show them how pretty he was. And he's also voiced by Vincent Tong. So, yeah. And just to clarify, respect the voice actor, hate the character. Not both. So, yeah, pretty much Justin Bieber Pony decides to step in and pretty much crush Big Mac's dream. And this is probably the point of the episode where you want to try to punch him in his smug face. Pony, Pony, so the Seaman C try to help out how, a Big Mac. As we see that Justin Bieber Pony literally has a hair of a pony standing right behind him, pretty much uh, wooing over him like he's Gaston, and I'm bringing it up because they have the hairstyles exactly like those same maidens in Beauty and the Beast that fawn over Gaston. Like they're being so subtle. Next thing I'm probably expecting is, is for him to have a song about himself, and as soon as Sweetie Belle... And as soon as Sugar Bell reveals that she's in love with a beast, he, she'll rally up the entire village to kill the beast. That's what I'm probably expecting to happen by the end of this episode. this episode credit, I really love how they just instantly write off the back X and A on the love potion, considering how contrived I've been, honestly kind of cruel it was back in, back in Hearts and Hooves Day. I'm actually kind of glad that they're X and A'ing it right off the bat. So Sweetie Belle basically tries to give Big Mac advice from a fairy tale book. Okay, so let's address probably one of the most consistent problems of this episode is Sweetie Belle taking advice from a, a fairy story book, book on fairy tales. Given how two episodes prior, the epi that episode's focus was on Sweetie Belle growing up and we seeing Sweetie Belle more mature. Pretty much people like Golden Fox have made the argument they should have put what Forever Philly is sooner. Okay, basically what I'm trying to explain is, is that because this kind of confuses, where it kind of feels like that Forever Philly should have happened after this episode and not before it. Because in the way the order is arranged, it makes it look like a Sweetie Belle is back to her old childish way when she gave Rarity a hard time for liking those, those things that she was younger. And I'm assuming that by this point, Sweetie Belle's 12 or 13, and she's trying to take advice from fairy tales. And, yeah, I get the episode, what the episode is trying to do, and I have a pretty good idea where it's going to go, but let's just get right to it. So Sweetie Belle basically tries to follow advice from the storybook to give Big Mac, Mac ideas to woo over, over Sugar Belle by basically fighting a monster and coming to a rescue. You know, but then Justin Bieber Crony comes in and takes back the satchel that Scootaloo tried to take as a diversion. I'm trying to think. Is he trying to be Justin Bieber before his testicles drop or after? Waking your special pony from a sleeping spell with a magic 
You know what? I'm not just... I'm not even going to comment on this. As pretty much Big Mac does the thing and tries to lean in, in on her, but for once, Justin Bieber Pony actually coming in and stopping this insanity actually helps. As he takes Ink Sugar Bell on a carriage ride. Except it is not sunset. It is clear daylight. This is that. This is exactly like, like what it was in the Lion King remake with Feel the Love Tonight. When it's not night, it's not fucking night. So. Yeah, honestly, it, despite me watching two reviews prior to watching this episode, the, her, the pony's name is Featherbanks, and like I said before, the rest of us are just going to call him Justin Bieber Pony, whose name he can't remember. Unfortunately, you know what this means because pretty much YouTube and me have a bit of a history when it comes to copyright and music. And, okay, so I'll pretty much give the Cliff Notes version of this. Basically, what it is is essentially Big Mac tries to sing a song that he's honestly been practicing, and it's pretty much the equivalent of country songs. And then, once again, and feather bangs, Justin Bieber pony basically comes in with exactly what feels like a Justin Bieber song. And I have a feeling that the song was pretty much based on, like I said, uh, the songs that Justin Bieber made before his testicle drops like Baby. I still can't believe that DHX decided to do this seven years late to the party on this point, And Justin Bieber has become a walking, talking punchline. And, and ever since his testicles finally dropped, he became every other artist known to existence. But because of this, it's, it's Big Mac tries to top it up and has to make the lyrics on the fly as Featherbanks continuously he tries to outdo him and basically continue to be the fake charm and charisma that at really he doesn't want to have. Have. Because... Ugh. So, yeah, to save some insanity, the two continue to desperately act, and it gets to a boiling point where they, where they end up crashing in Sugar Bell's display bell, and she finally just loses, basically reaches her boiling point. I'm just kind of So, let's kind of tiptoe, let's stop tiptoeing around the issue. So, you kind of, so pretty much by this point in the episode, you have a feeling, this episode does a good job with sympathizing with Big Mac and wanting to put himself out there, because, believe it or not, what, what Apple Bloom said all the way back in, in Hearts and Hooves Day, where he's incredibly shy, it actually comes to fruition as pretty much Big Mac struggles with trying to, to basically express his romantic feelings for the pony that he really has a crush on. However, but the episode does a great job to basically set in that the reality is everything that happens in a fantasy book, it's not going to be the same way in a romantic life. Pretty much... Basically, everything that happens in fiction in a fairy tale, it's not going to apply to real life. Because, believe me, I've been there. And when it first happened, and when the reality set in, it hit me like a freight train. You know all those issues I had back when I started this channel? And that was just basically kind of the issues that I was going through. Because I had a massive crush on this girl, 
And I basically thought it was going to be like the Nightmare Before Christmas or because I thought we were going to be the Rocky and Adrian. And then when she told me that it's better for us to be just friends, that pretty much hit me like a freaking semi. And I was pretty much upset for like 10 days and I was nearing the end of my 7th grade year and it was a rough transition going eighth grade to my freshman year of high school, and since graduating, we haven't even talked at all because her social media, other than her Instagram, is MIA, but even then, she hasn't talked with anyone. And I just basically make it just, it is what it is. And I struggle with this because it's hard for me to put myself out there, and when I do, nobody really gives a shit. I put myself out there on eHarmony and Clover, and nobody wants nobody wants to give me the time of day, and and you don't want to put yourself out there of just being yourself to somebody that you like because you're worried that you're going to get hurt in the end. And if you're someone like me that has tried it over and over again, you've just become numb to it. So. At least I give this episode pretty much that. And screw you, because I'm not listening to you talk about Monster High YouTube. So, yeah. So this episode really does kind of show the struggles that someone like Big Mac, who we can relate to, has these types of issues. And because we can relate to that, and while Feather Brain, or rather Justin Bieber Pony, makes you want to punch him in the stupid smug face, he does what the episode sets out to do, as this episode gives a rather poignant line that really I just addressed earlier. We don't get it. Big grand gestures always work in a fairy tale. Sugarbell's not a fairy tale princess. She's a real pony. She's kind. She works hard. She's sweeter than everything in her bakery. Okay, so other than that last sentence, that right there is what I was trying to explain before. The separation between fantasy and reality. And that if you really have a crush on someone, the things that you expect to work in the fairy tales, you're just going to have to dump that right out. Because the reality is that you have to take the time to get to know the person. Understand what makes them special about you. You know, so they know why you feel the way they do about them, and they can feel the same for you, and that's how you can have that relationship. So it's because of that realization Big Mac basically gets the idea, while a Scootaloo basically stalls, is that Big Mac ends up building her a, a larger, more massive display case that really impresses her, given what she had told Big Mac earlier in the episode. my mouth shut, but like I said, I'm sure you're probably in those, in those three to four seconds of the dessert of the amount of sexual innuendos, you're probably downing the whole bottle by this point, if you're still playing the drinking game of how many sexual innuendos are in this episode. So at the end of the day, pretty much Sugar Bell respects Hex Big Mac. Heck, and pretty much he's the one to go in and basically guess who the hell shows up again. Really, I, I just want you to really take a wild freaking guess. But, yeah, I think while we're at it, I, mean, I should... Yeah, so I think I should probably mention... Yeah, I pretty much should probably mention this by this point, because 
I think really that's just what you got to be at the end of the day. If you just really show somebody that you care about and really listen to what they have to say, okay, then you will probably basically... You'll, you'll basically be able to get somebody that you feel... I, basically, I'm trying to basically get my thoughts together because it really is a lot to take in. Because, But I think it's something that really you have to keep in mind. I think at the end of the day, I think as long as you just be yourself, you basically... But, yeah, like I said, basically the point that I'm trying to get to is that at the end of the day, Big Mac wins the girl. Yay! And guess who the hell shows up to ruin the entire mood? Yeah, that's the point that I was trying to make. And finally, he tries to get advice from the CMNC. This guy! Yeah. This guy claims to have trouble with trying to talk to ponies. After this entire episode's made abundantly clear that he's basically the pony equivalent of Justin Bieber, and now he's trying to sit there and claim that he's an introvert? Don't think you can pull that shit. Okay, so after he went to the audience, the episode's over. Okay, so... That was hard to say anything, and this episode's kind of hard to say anything. I mean, this episode is not the worst. I mean, really, because there's far more episodes I hate, which is pretty much kind of the gold standard. This episode's really hard to describe, and it's kind of difficult to review, because it, it does handle a very... Very touchy subject, but does it with a character like Big Mac that a lot of us can relate to. And I think the tricky part is 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 that, yeah, the episode is predictable. I'm not going to act like this is one of the best episodes, but the episode does a good job with addressing the message, and I think it does it in a way that kids can understand, especially when it comes to love and trying to find a relationship. And I think this is the end of the day. It just basically gives you a reminder that everything that you see in fairy tales, it's not going to happen. You have to focus on the real, it's real life problems. Basically, you pinpoint on what you think the person that you love will like about you. And I think for what the episode is, despite how incredibly predictive, stupid, over the top, and even contrived at times the episode gets, it does its job well enough. I think really the most legitimate criticisms I can really think of this episode is the fact of Sweetie Belle dump being dumbed down to rely on a fairy tale to basically rely on the ways to win over a girl. And like I said, given how she was two episodes prior, it kind of makes you wish that the that someone in the production staff would have made Forever Philly Episode 8 and this episode, Episode 6, so, so the consistency would make more sense in Sweetie Belle's character development. So, honestly, this episode, watching it again, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. So, I think, really, this episode's probably somewhere smack dab in the middle. So, let me think. I think probably... Honestly, I think hard to say anything 
is probably a B minus. Because, yeah, like I said, of all the complaints in the episode, it can be contrived at times, it can be over the top, it can be stupid at points, but for what it is, the episode gets to, gets the job done, and whatever that did annoy me, it le some of it was at least intentional. And, yeah, so hard to say anything is a B-. minus. Alright, so I'm Flick King Game... So, before I sign off, I just have to check to see what the next episode is. Because I honestly don't remember, because I haven't done this in a long time, where I reviewed the episode from my laptop. So, just magic. Alright, so, so next time... All right, so I'm Flick Kang Gamer, and next time, our next episode is going to to be as soon as I can find the damn thing. I am doing really a shit job tonight, because... Alright, so I'm Flick Hang Gamer, and next time we are going to take a look at Honest Apple. Ah, crap. Alright, see you guys next time.